Hi, I'm Ms. Cern. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to talk about graph theory and how it can be used to color a map. In the previous video, we discussed colorings of graphs. In this video, we're going to use graph coloring to determine the least number of colors that can be used to color the map of South Africa so that countries with common boundaries have different colors. Our strategy will be to first assign a label to each of the countries that will represent our vertices. Then we're going to use edges to connect the vertices of countries that share borders. Finally, we'll use the procedure for coloring a graph. Here I've assigned a label to each country. These are going to be our vertices. Next, we're going to use edges to connect the vertices of countries that share borders. Let's look at the vertices and the map side by side. Starting with Namibia, we'll connect the country to each of the countries with which it shares a common border. There are actually four, Angola, Zambia, Botswana, and South Africa. We'll continue in this way, connecting each country to each of the other countries with which it shares a border. So next, we're going to use the procedure for coloring a graph, which guarantees that no two vertices joined by a single edge are colored with the same color. And then that will allow us to color our map so that no two regions joined by a boundary are the same color. Remember that you should always label the degrees of your vertices first. Remember the degree of a vertex is just the number of edges that's joining that vertex. So here we have our degrees. We, we do this because we like to focus on the highest degree first. This is advantageous in trying to get the least number of colors necessary to color the map. We're going to start coloring with the degree 7 vertex here. I chose blue. You can choose any color. It's the number of colors that matters, not the actual color. And we're going to then try to color as many vertices blue as possible. There's many ways you can go about this, but it's a good idea to focus on the highest degree first. So there are two vertices of degree 6. This one up and to the right is already joined to the degree 7 vertex, so we can't color it blue. That would not solve the problem. We need different colors joined by single edges. So instead, I'm going to start with this 6 here. But once I do that, I see that all the other vertices are joined to one or the other of these two blue vertices by a single edge. So I have to go on to another color. Of the remaining vertices, the highest degree is 6, so I'm going to start there, colored it green, and I'm going to try to color, starting with the highest degree vertices if possible, other green vertices. There are three three vertices of degree four. The two on the right are each joined to the green vertex by a single edge. So we can't color those green, but I can color the other one green. And then that leaves vertices of degree three for us to look at. This one is not joined to the other two greens by a single edge. And also this degree one is not joined by a single edge to the other three greens, but that's all we can do with green. So I have to move on to another color. Of the remaining, I there were two degree four vertices. I chose to start with this one. I colored it red. The other degree four vertex actually can be red as well because it's not joined to this one by a single edge. And then I also noticed this degree three vertex satisfies that condition and this degree two vertex, but the other two degree threes are joined to a red by a single edge. So now we have to choose a fourth color. I chose lavender or purple. Notice both of the remaining vertices can be colored colored purple because they're not joined by a single edge. So here we have a coloring. It's a four color pattern and we're going to color each of the regions on the map the color of the corresponding vertex. So the result is a four color map. Other configurations are possible, but you'll find if you experiment that there is no way to color this map with fewer than four colors, such that you avoid having two regions that are adjacent with the same color. This is related to what's known as the four color problem. Historically, map makers found that four colors sufficed for any map, and mathematicians started to wonder around 1850, is this something that holds true for all maps? And in 1970, Six, two mathematicians slash computer scientists used computers to prove that in fact it is true. Any map can be colored using only four colors or less such that no two adjacent regions are the same color. Because humans can't confirm this result without computer assistance, some mathematicians do not consider it to be a proven fact, but we accept it as true. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please remember to like it. It helps other students to find the video.